Akron Athletics presents Zips Weekly with Joe Moorhead. Sponsored by Bryant Heating and Cooling and Akron Hilton Fairlawn. And now your host, Joe Dunn. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Zips Weekly with head football coach Joe Moorhead. Well, for the second straight week, the Zips go into overtime. They lose a tough one, another tough loss. This one 13 to 10 to Buffalo. But now the Zips are right back home on Saturday afternoon. It'll be a 3:30 kickoff as the Northern Illinois Huskies come to town. It's homecoming, Hall of Fame weekend, a lot going on. Hope to see you at InfoCision Stadium Saturday afternoon at 3:30. Coach, we were talking before the show, very easily your football team could be 4-1. and one. And I think right now this is when that good senior leadership has to step up and tell everybody we still have seven football games left. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we knew the margin of error was going to be very small coming into the game. Uh, certainly frustrated by the outcome. Uh, kids fought hard, you know, aside from the yep. Kentucky game this year, which they've proven to be a, a very good yep. football team, a three-point loss, a two-point loss in overtime to a Big Ten team where we missed the field goal in regulation and then a – overtime loss to, to Buffalo. So uh, certainly frustrated with the outcome. Uh, and, you know, we're getting the game into the fourth quarter with a chance yeah. to win it. we gotta got to find out a way to close it out. You know better than anybody, Coach. You can look back at the tape. Uh, three or four plays here and there, and we win that football game Saturday. Yeah, offense, defense, special teams. And, you know, talked about it as a staff on Sunday that we have to put a complete four-quarter game yeah. together with all three units, you know, playing great complementary football. And, uh, you know, that's what's going to take the win in this league. Now, people have asked me over the weekend, Coach, and early in the week, what about the quarterback situation? I'll let you address that, but things don't look good for Mr. Irons. Yeah, I mean, he's been battling upper body, upper body, uh, upper body injuries the entire season and uh, really uh, fought hard to get back and healthy and uh, sustained a lower body injury in the uh, third quarter. So, you know, we're still getting him evaluated to see what his status is, uh, and we'll find out a little bit later in the next couple of days. Okay, right now let's go back to InfoCision Stadium on Saturday. Another beautiful day as Buffalo comes to town and they win the toss coach. They defer. It means it's absolutely going to go on offense to begin the game. Yeah, got a uh, good sc screen pass out there to Miles Walker. Uh, ended up with three and out and you know, defense came out and then, uh, you know, had a, had a great series. And once again, the defense really doing a good job sending down a Buffalo team. They, they had put a lot of points on the board. They give it up a lot, but they uh, scored a lot this year. Yeah, they were averaging over 30 a game and we held them to 10 in regulation and you know, outside of a, a penalty on third down, could have been even less. Here's a nice play going to get good yardage and a little misdirection. And what do you get about eight, nine, ten yards here? Yeah, with with Alex Adams, our, our most uh, explosive offensive player being out, I thought Bobby and Miles did a good job uh, creating some production from, from the slot position. Their quarterback was really good to transfer from Rutgers. Did a good job on him, though. Yeah, he, he, he got his, um, you know, completions in, but... The yards per uh, attempt and completion were low, and we're able to harass him in the pocket and you know get him off schedule. And we knew if he stood back there, we'd uh, you know it'd be a long day if, if we gave him a lot of time to throw. Here's a broken play, and DJ turns this one into a big play. Yeah, so we had four drives in the first half, uh, two punts, uh, yeah, a touchdown drive, and a, and a field goal drive. So uh, we really needed to you know take advantage of those possessions. From ground level, let's take a look at this. Nice pass out to Miles Walker, who's really playing. Really the nice catch we'll show later, but he's really coming on. Yeah, he's done a nice job. There's the catch we were talking about. Yeah, that's, that's not an easy catch. Yeah, another one of Miles, a little bit behind him. Does a good job pinning the shoulder and getting that thing caught, getting us down into the red zone. There's Lingard, who is doing a good job right here. Again, breaking tackles and... Yeah, he they, weighs about 195, 200 pounds. Yeah, didn't get a ton of opportunities, you know, but averaged, I think, over five yards to carry. So, once again, two, two good weeks for him in terms of production. Got to continue getting him more opportunities to carry the ball. Here's D.J. Irons from ground level. He's going to take it all the way down to the two-yard line. And this is fourth, and they're going to throw it out to Anderson. They get a good block up on top to Gathings, too. Yeah, we knew they were in a zero blitz, and the Mike linebacker was covering the back. So, we cracked with the slot and got Drake out into space, and uh, D.J. threw a good ball. It's good to see him get in the end zone because uh, he's a good football player. Yeah, between he and he and uh, Lorenzo, we got to once again keep getting those guys opportunities. One more look at that touchdown pass, and there comes the uh, touchdown tire. Yep. For the young man out of Arizona. Home of Goodyear. Extra point is up. We'll talk about the young man that kicked that one. New kicker for the Zips, getting a chance to uh, play some football and 
did a good job. Yeah, real good game by Lama. His uh, so make the tackle there on the swing pass. It's been his his most productive game so far this season. I don't think there's been one offensive line that's really pinned your defensive front up. They have really played well all year long. No, outside from Kentucky when they kind of leaned on us yeah. in, the, in the late third quarter and the fourth quarter, you know, our, our, our front seven has done a really, really nice job this year. As you can see, the zip's up seven to nothing. We were playing in the second quarter from Saturday's game against Buffalo. And again, that zip defense is going to be stout right there in a, about a two-yard gain. And here come the zips again right back at the Bulls. This is Gathing, so he's turned into maybe one of your primary receivers. Yeah, he's leading lead the team in catches right now. You know, getting some good short and intermediate balls. Got to, got to push it down the field to him a little bit better. Here he is again. He's going to scramble, and I think this was a third down play. Jumps ahead and gets the first down for you. Yeah, moving the ball well here, mixing up the run and the pass. You know, got down in the red zone, uh, missed a open receiver on an over route uh, that he threw to Newell, and then uh, took a sack and, and, and uh, had to settle for the field goal. Later on in the second quarter, you can see we're tied right now. It's 7-7. to seven. The Zips are going to go down and kick a field goal to take a 10-7 to seven halftime lead. This is how they're going to do it. Good scramble here by Irons. Yep, that's part of being a, a good dual threat quarterback. Go through your progressions. If it's not there, I'm going to run and then throw away. And he's done a nice job, you know, making plays through improvisation. Here's that uh, fake pitch, and that's been a big play for you. Yeah, missed one block there. You know, the, the guard got strained a little more. The guy who ends up making the tackle, took the sack there, and then Owen Wiley comes in and you know, makes the field goal. Yeah, Owen Wiley, young man out of a really good football program up at Avon Lake. Yeah, good local kid. Another was solid hit there, and those are the first half highlights. You got to feel good, coach. You go in at halftime as you've done a lot this year, up ten to seven. Yeah, defense played very well. Uh, held into one touchdown. Offense, like I mentioned, scored yeah. on two of our four drives, and you know, heading into the locker room feeling pretty good. Yep. Zips up three. We're going to take a break. Come back and watch second half highlights right after this timeout. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes E.H. Roberts Heating and Cooling. Find them at ehroberts.com. At the University of Akron, you have opportunity. Opportunity to be transformed through learning in our more than 200 in-demand degree programs. Opportunity to gain lifelong talents in the classroom, the studio, the lab, and in the community. And the opportunity to be a leader because of those who will support you here. At the University of Akron, you'll find your opportunity to reach greater heights. Here, everyone rises. Okay, welcome back to Zips Weekly with head football coach Joe Moorhead. We're at halftime of Saturday's game at InfoCision Stadium against Buffalo. Akron up right now 10-7. And Coach, you change much at halftime? We're playing pretty good right now on defense. We've got one touchdown in the books. Yeah, it wouldn't change much defensively. Uh, I yeah. thought we did a really nice job there. Um, you know, limiting the run and, and uh, pressuring the passer and, and force them to keep it in front of us and, and, and throw a bunch of intermediate balls. And then, you know, offensively, you know, you talked about it, scored on two or four possessions. Yeah. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, we weren't able to get much mustard in the second half. Okay, let's go back to InfoCision Stadium on Saturday. As we said, we're at halftime right now. The Zips up 10 to 7. Zips begin their first possession of the second half at the 23-yard line and try and make some things happen, Coach. And, boy, defense stepping up again. Big play. Yeah, huge play there. Uh, KJ Martin. KJ Martin on the sack there and quick three and out and, and got him to punt it. KJ Martin, kind of a leader back there. No, he's done a real nice job as a senior cap. I shouldn't say senior, junior captain uh, with one more year of eligibility. He's done a really, really nice job. There's a nice play by Corey Thomas. He needed all of that six feet four frame, and that was a nice play. Yeah, when we got here, he was playing defensive end and kind of looked at his skill set and his speed and his coverage ability and moved him back to safety, and he's really done a nice job this year. Yeah, he really reacts well. Nice play. I think that was Thompson that came in and made the play, number yeah, 16. Defense really been swarming, and, and Brian McCoy has been a tackling machine. He, kind of the heart and soul of our defense has really done a, a phenomenal job this year as a first-year starter. Yeah, we're going to talk about your linebackers, I think, in the next segment. But, wow, have they been good. They've been, they've been fantastic. 
I know you're deep in that position also, got some young kids, and I think all those guys, we'll talk about this later, are all coming back. Yeah, we had uh, Bame and Cooper out with injury, so Jaron Griffin got a little bit of time, and uh, Kamari Harris is a walk-on kid for us, got a couple snaps, so Brian and Antavius played almost 70 snaps apiece, uh, and uh, hopefully we're able to get Bame and, Bame and Shimon back this week in addition to Jaron. Irons is going to throw that little flip pass. A little uh, You throw that once or twice this year, Coach, and I think you've hit on all of them. Yeah, that's the one we hit at Temple uh, against split safety, so Lorenzo did a nice job there. Uh, good explosive play. As you can see, this football game is tied right now at 10 as we play early in the fourth quarter. And, boy, what a great punt right there. That was Dante Jackson. He pinned the Bulls all the way back at the one-yard line. Yeah, our punt, return our punt team has been very good. Obviously, Dante's been consistent. I, I don't know that we've given up a – a net return uh, yard on punt return this year. Uh, so it, it's been a real positive for us. Darian Lewis came up and made the play we just saw. And again, now they're going to get out of this. They have a third down conversion, which is one of those big plays. I think he looked back and say, what if? Yeah, we had them pinned back, wanted to get field possession, third down. They threw a, a go ball against soft coverage, and it got behind our guy, and they caught it. Ultimately ended up forcing the punt, but it was probably a, a flip of probably, you know, 30 or 40 yards of field position. There's Bobby Golden turning the corner, takes a big hit here, but that's one of his better returns. Yeah, gets it up to the 44 in plus field position. Unfortunately, we weren't able to, you know, uh, do much with it. Midway through this fourth quarter right now, and both teams trying to get in position maybe to kick a game-winning field goal. It's going to go into overtime, but watching play here is as if defense is playing well right at midfield. Yeah, Coach Tibsar and, and the defensive staff have done a really nice job. Well, there's a near miss there. Yeah, we uh, – <laughs> Got the drive rolling, and you know, once again, we were in the in the um, you know shadows of the red zone there, right around the 35, 40 yard line, and uh, you know, unfortunately, had a, a sack on one drive, and then a turnover on the other that, that that prevented us from getting down into field goal range. Big pass. I think this was for a first down again from ground level. Yeah, the golden. He can do a little bit of everything. He's he's still only a sophomore. Yeah, right? he is young guy. Three more years left. Playing on a 10-10 tie with not much time left in the football game, a little under five minutes right now. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those days where it's going to be a defensive battle, uh, good old-fashioned pitcher's duel, and, uh, and once again, our defense did a phenomenal job keeping us in the game and providing the offense with opportunities to, to get the ball and go score. Bulls try and run that quarterback draw, and the defense is all over that one. Yeah, we talked about it you know, last week. It's going to be a, a you know, gap integrity you know, great eye discipline and, and, and keeping the ball in front of us on the back end. Talking a little bit about overtime, you won the toss and you selected to go on defense. It was a great decision because you held him to a field goal. Yeah, held him to a field goal. Uh, I think they only gained one net yard and uh, tried to run play for us on the first one. Yeah. Got tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Now you're behind the sticks and uh, went to throw an intermediate route, the one we had completed the gatings a little That's bit right. earlier in the game and they blitzed to Mike and we got sacked and now yeah. You, know, you got to, you got to take a shot to try to get into field goal range and uh, you know through an incompletion. Yeah, you put uh, Jeff Undercuffler in. He was had some good moments moments last year, but again, kind of limited what he can do. He's a, he's a drop back passing quarterback. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's hard as an as an offense uh, at the quarterback position, and certainly as a play caller to yeah. to find up, any yeah. find any find any rhythm or consistency when uh, you know you were dealing with all those injuries and guys in and out and two right. different styles of quarterbacks. But we got to find a way to get it done. Exactly. Zips losing overtime 13 to 10. We're going to take a break and talk about some of the individual performances from Saturday right after this timeout. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes E.H. Roberts Heating and Cooling. Find them at ehroberts.com. At the University of Akron, you have opportunity. Opportunity to be transformed through learning in our more than 200 in-demand degree programs. Opportunity to gain lifelong talents in the classroom, the studio, the lab, and in the community. And the opportunity to be a leader because of those who will support you here. At the University of Akron, you'll find your opportunity to reach greater heights. Here, everyone rises. Okay, welcome back. And each week we talk uh, to Coach Moorhead about maybe some of the performances that stood out for him. And Coach, let's start with the linebackers. We've already talked a lot about those guys, but Antavius Fish, 
Brian McCoy, two of the best pair, I think, in the Mid-American Conference. Yeah, played just about every snap of the game. Yeah. Uh, incredible level of production. I think Brian had 14 total tackles, and, and, and Tavius probably close to that. But uh, defending a run well, uh, rushing a passer, and uh, you know, doing good in pass coverage. You got good depth, too. You mentioned Andrew Bame down a little bit, but Shimon Cooper is transferred in from Illinois. The young kid out of Mississippi, Griffin, I think is going to be a good player. So good depth at that linebacker slot. Yeah, the, uh, you know, hurt, hurt having um, Shimon and Bame out for this game, and uh, Jaron stepped up with his opportunity. But, yeah, definitely a deep group. We've got Melvin yeah. Spriggs redshirting, and uh, we'll continue to recruit and uh, have a, kid, a young man committed, uh, a high school player right now, and then we'll keep hitting the portal. Exactly. Let's talk about a young kicker by the name of Owen Wiley who got a shot, a young kid out of Avon Lake. Good high school program up there. And I didn't realize you kind of have a kickoff each week. It's almost like wrestling. Who's going to wrestle each week? And <laughs> Wiley won this one. Yeah, you'd prefer not to have that. But, uh, you know, we were four of eight heading into this game and, you know, missed a couple of crucial kicks at Kentucky and, you know, obviously the big one at Indiana. So, uh, you know, kicker's not unlike any other position. You got to give the guys an opportunity to compete during the week. And, uh, had a bunch of kicks and Owen came out on top and, you know, outside of the block, which really wasn't his fault, um, yeah. you know, he, he, he hit his field goal, hit his extra point. So uh, we'll continue with him moving forward. You weren't hesitant about sending him out there on a 48 yard or he must have shown he can kick that in practice. Yeah, fourth and 16, one, one a ton of a choice there and he's, yeah. he's made them from uh, from 50 plus. And okay. I think that that one had the trajectory in the distance. Unfortunately, they, you know, number four come in and got that thing off the wing. Let's talk about Drake Anderson, a young guy that scored a touchdown uh, on a pass from Irons against Buffalo. He is probably uh, the one and two running back. What about the running back depth? Last year you talked a lot about Charles Kellum and maybe give us an update on that running back position. Yeah, um, Lorenzo and, and Drake are the, are the two primary guys getting reps now and have a nice complimentary style and uh, need to continue getting them more opportunities in a run game as we run more plays. Yeah. You know, we talked about earlier four drives and, you know, with the new uh, – clock stoppage rule or lack of stopping yeah uh, you're, you're not seeing as many uh, possessions or or, um, or plays but uh, Charles has done a really nice job in practice he's made a significant impact on special teams yes. guy with a bunch of eligibility remaining who uh, who's gonna you know, be a nice performer for us down the road still high on him yeah, absolutely okay how about Miles Walker you told me earlier in the uh, season he may have advanced more than any player when he came in you take a look at him and say well what, what do we got here but he's proven to be a player had a very good spring uh, an excellent fall camp uh, scored a touchdown against Temple and uh, you know as we mentioned with Alex Adams being out not being able to play we knew Miles and Bobby would have to step up and you know both those guys had had some nice catches in uh, in production a young guy that stood out to me, you bring him in a lot on defense. Uh, he has Bennett Adler out a good program up at St. Ignatius in Cleveland. Yeah, Bennett, Bennett's role has increased throughout the course of the season. Uh, he's shown to be reliable, uh, uh, knows his assignments very well, plays with a high level of effort, and, and he's, he's produced. So, uh, you know, between uh, CJ, Bennett, uh, Antonio, LaJoshua, uh, you know, uh, those guys have been doing a real nice job at the defensive end position. You have some good guys sitting out now on defense or guys you're looking forward to next year to contributing? Yeah, Cameron Cheatham, uh, the freshman out of Pittsburgh, out of Pittsburgh is going to yeah. be going to be a star here. And then Marcus Moore, the young man from Maslin, been doing a real nice job on scout team. And uh, you never know how it's going to go with injuries. They may be thrust into uh, duty this year, but, you know, two guys that are, uh, you know, really, really high ceiling. We mentioned uh, safety Corey Thomas, a young kid out of Penn Hills High School in Pittsburgh. You've moved him around. He's finally found a home for you. It's a big safety at 6'4". Yeah, very athletic, uh, fast, great coverage skills. Um, and as you mentioned, found a home at the safety position and uh, had a couple of nice pass breakups against Buffalo. And, you know, I think with uh, continued time and experience, he'll, he'll, he'll really improve his player. Yeah. One final question before we take a break. Uh, kicker Dante Jackson is doing a good job punting, I think. Real nice job. Our, our punt protection scheme has been good. Have a couple close calls. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the operation in the, in the kick direction and doing a nice job with the, um, you know, the, you know, the pooch punts and his distance and, and really the hang time has been right. the biggest thing. Exactly. Hey, we're going to take a break. When we come back, Northern Illinois coming to town. We'll talk about the Huskies right after this. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes E.H. Roberts Heating and Cooling. Find them at ehroberts.com. At the University of Akron, you have opportunity. Opportunity to be transformed through learning in our more than 200 in-demand degree programs. 
opportunity to gain lifelong talents in the classroom, the studio, the lab, and in the community. And the opportunity to be a leader because of those who will support you here. At the University of Akron, you'll find your opportunity to reach greater heights. Here, everyone rises. Okay, welcome back to our weekly Skyder Report brought to you each week by the Hilton Akron Fairlawn Hotel. As we said, Northern Illinois comes to town. That'll be a 3.30 kickoff. A lot going on on campus. It'll be homecoming, family weekend. It'll be Hall of Fame induction ceremony on Friday night. As we said, make sure you be there. 3.30 Saturday, the Zips against Northern Illinois. And boy, the Huskies played Toledo really tough. 35-33 on Saturday. They only have one win. That's on Boston College, but seems like they're getting a little bit better each week. Yeah, uh, definitely improving. Uh, coach has done a really nice job. Um, and, and really, a lot of ways, they're, they're, their season's kind of a mirror image of us. Yes. Had, had a 20-30 uh, you know, uh, point loss in Nebraska. We're able to hold on and beat Boston College, similar to our Indiana game, but they were able to finish. Uh, lost to one double-A team, and, or they call it FCS now, I guess, yes. and then a, then a, then a two-point loss to a, to a conference opponent. So, uh, you know, very similar in a lot of ways. They started the season on a high note. I think they went out to Boston and beat Boston College 27 to 24. That was in week number one. But since then, as you said, Coach, they played a lot of good competition just coming up short. Yeah, big physical team. Uh, very strong on, on both lines. Uh, Rocky Lombardi, sixth or seventh year senior yeah. kid, transfer from uh, Michigan State. Uh, got good skill players. And, uh, you know, as you know, Northern Illinois has been one of the you know, uh, blue bloods of this of this That's league, right. and, the, and they're always going to be, a, like, every MAC game is going to be tough. They put up 444 yards of total offense against Toledo. I think it was 258 passing, ran for another 186. You already mentioned their quarterback. They got a good running back in Ontario Brown. He ran for 152. Yeah, big physical uh, offensive line. Uh, tight ends get involved, and, uh, you know, the kid's shifty. He's fast. He's able to make people miss in space, and uh, it'll be a huge challenge for our defense. I remember last season, Coach, we bust all the way from Akron out to DeKalb, <laughs> Illinois. I told everybody, hey, that's a good bonding experience. We yeah. get off the bus and maybe play our best football game against uh, Norland, Illinois out there. Yeah, that's one of the uh, unique features of the MAC that yes. you're going to have some long bus trips and get home at 3 or 4 in the morning sometimes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's a part of the, uh, part of the experience. So uh, now, now they'll be on the other end of that. Yeah, Jeff Undercuffler uh, had a heck of a game out of DeKalb last year. He got the start. And uh, we'd love to see him do something similar to that this week. Yeah, we'll see how DJ, uh, you know, how his lower body injury plays out. But, uh, you know, Jeff certainly led us to, uh, as you mentioned, the, the win over NIU last year and, yeah. you know, the, the close call against Buffalo. So, you know, we're, we're confident in all of our quarterbacks' ability to, to give us an opportunity to win. Yeah, Thomas Hammock, I think, is their coach. He played football at North Illinois. It's always special when you're coaching your alma mater. And uh, uh, he's looking to get get right in the Mid-American Conference here in Akron. Yeah, everyone's, you know, got one game under the belt. And, uh you know, it's uh, the race is, is wide open yes, to everybody. So, I mean, it's once again an opportunity to go one and zero against a good opponent on homecoming. And, you know, uh, hopefully we can continue playing well on defense, find our consistency on offense and uh, you know, keep playing well on special teams. Yeah, I know you've looked at the tape from last year, what they did maybe against Toledo before the season. Let, any similarities? You take a look at that and see if you can pick out some things. They do the same. Yeah, probably probably more similar on offense than they are on defense. Uh, had a little bit of a change of coordinator, but at the end of the day, you know, I'd say it's more similar than dissimilar. So we'll watch the film, uh, make our game plan, and, and then go from there. As we mentioned early in the program, Coach, uh, seven league games left. You got three at home, four on the road. So a lot of football yet to be played. A lot of football. Take it one at a time. Kids will be prepared. As I mentioned, we're, we're right there near the top of the yeah. mountain. We just got to find a way to get to the top. There you go. Good luck on Saturday. We'll see you back here next week with more Zips Weekly and also at InfoCision Stadium on Saturday. For the coach, I'm Joe Dunn. Always remember, go Zips. Thanks for watching Zips Weekly with Joe Moorhead. Sponsored by Bryant Heating and Cooling and Akron Hilton Fairlawn. We'll see you next week. And as always, go Zips. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.